So there's this little series called Monogatari. Um, if you like this show, fuck you. Look, I don't know what the opposite of peak is, but I'm coining this right now. Monogatari is deep fiction. It's horrible. In fact, I hope its lunch money gets stolen at kids club tomorrow. With that being said, I'd be the one stealing that lunch money because goddamn, how did they get away with this? With the uh, slightly less than ordinary or even legal themes within Monogatari, this has led to quite a bit of controversy, which I think is pretty unfortunate since it brushes aside the fact that this anime has been subliminally hinting at the fact that what we are viewing is an allegory for mental illness, and no, I'm not joking. I'm pretty sure that even with the plethora of controversy surrounding this subject, that nobody has actually talked about a certain aspect of Hachikuji, and I'm not sure if it's because they just don't know or if they're too scared to come out with it, but I- I think that Hachikuji from the Monogatari series has- I- I, I can't even say it. Look, hold on, let me, let me get my girlfriend on the line for this one. Now look, this topic is nowhere even close to new. I wouldn't even say that the anime was trying to hide it because I'm pretty sure they actually just tell you straight up how this is a thing, but because I'm the one talking about it, it's different, okay? Please don't leave. If you still somehow don't know what Monogatari is, well, don't worry, this video won't contain any spoilers since it's only like the third episode, and also because I don't even know how you would spoil Monogatari since that implies that anything you're watching makes sense in the first place, which it might, but I'm too much of a big stupid idiot to care, so yeah, let's go. And if you want a little synopsis on Monogatari, well, you're not gonna get one from me because that's boring, so I'm just gonna talk to you about Hachikuji for like two hours. This is Hachikuji. She's, um, pretty slow. In the head. Yeah, despite how she looks, she's actually 21 because she is kind of dead, so, uh, now you know. Um, does that even count? But yeah, Hachikuji got railed by a car when she was like 11 and fucking died, so now she's a ghost who wanders around at a snail's pace, and Araragi being the coomer he is is basically obligated to save her, and that's where the grooming comes in. When most people talk about Hachikuji's issues, they will almost always bring up that she's fighting against her dependence on others, which is true, but for some reason we throw aside her schizophrenic tendencies as nothing more than a gag? No, that's fucked up. Mental illness is no new concept when it comes to anime. Look at A Silent Voice, look at Evangelion, look at Welcome to the NHK, look in the mirror, mental illness is everywhere. To understand the snail, we first need to understand the monster story. If you've seen Monogatari for yourself, you may have noticed that the presence of background characters is virtually non-existent, and that isn't to say that they aren't there, but more so that through Araragi's lens, these outsiders hold little to no value and prefers for us to center on whoever he wants to groom next. This is also just a really clever excuse for Shaft to not draw background characters, but we can chalk it up to symbolism because it sounds cooler. I mean, look at opening one. She is huge. That's because Senju Gahara is a sociopathic bitch who sees everyone as less than her, and yeah, she's right. They are. Let me kiss your feet. But anyways, yeah, when we see something such as Araragi's perspective, it's all porn. All right, makes sense. And same goes for Shinobu's opening, which evokes an ancient and raw aesthetic since she's an old hag. But now think about Hachikuji. Why? <laughs> Why on earth, if we can even call this earth, is Hachikuji surrounded by other Hachikujis? Everything, the, the teacher, the students, the crowds, even the fucking bus driver, what, what the fish? Now stick with me here. If we look at this chart of schizophrenia symptoms, you will suddenly piece together that Hachikuji falls under each of these categories and not even just a little. These categories are Hachikuji. First we have delusions, and I would assume that this is pretty self-explanatory, but she is unwilling to accept the fact that she is literally dead. Otherwise, she wouldn't be wandering around aimlessly for the last 10 years looking for her house as if she just lost her mom in a grocery store. Subject 2 is hallucinations. Now, unless I'm hallucinating myself, explain to me why the only thing I can see are children. Disorganized speech. <laughs> You know, I, I think I'll just let Hachikuji speak for herself on this one. <laughs> Flattened effect. Once again, look at the opening. Are you gonna try telling me that she doesn't look depressed here? Reduced speech. Honestly, I don't really know what this means, but she doesn't really talk that much, and even when she does, she usually just ends up communicating with a feral bite like the creature she is, so maybe she just can't express her emotions in any other fashion, or maybe it's because she's getting assaulted, I don't know. When it comes to her lack of initiative, I'd say that waiting 10 years to do something about you being dead is pretty lacking if you ask me. Honestly, I did try reaching out to my good friend Jeff from Mother's Basement to break this opening down for me, but for some reason he didn't reply back, so I'm, I'm kind of at a loss, guys. I, <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. You ruined my fucking video, asshole. You know, even with all the evidence I gathered, I still couldn't help but feel like there was something missing. Just one last piece that would really convince not only myself, but anybody who has still managed to not click off this video that something was amidst here. And that's... <laughs> That's when I realized, I had been inking up the wrong ocean all along.
Yuji's backpack? What, what could have been inside it? It's a question that's actually never been directly answered, and we've only ever been given allusions to the truth, such as a quote from the Mayoi snail lark in the light novel, where it said that she neatly bound her hair and filled her favorite backpack full of old memories, hoping to delight her mother with them. My mind felt like it was trapped in an eternal Umineko locked room murder. I mean, had I committed a logic error? I, I, I don't know. Uh, after all, what I had realized to be inside that snail's fucking backpack was too sluggish for me to bear. <sighs> Dead bodies. Hachikuji, for the entirety of the Monogatari series, had been carrying around dead bodies in her backpack in plain sight for all of us to see. Perhaps it's because Hachikuji was so useless that nobody even thought to bat an eye, something that I think many of you may also be able to relate to. But I don't think these are just any dead bodies. These... These are the dead bodies of her now deceased, past Hachikujis. Anybody who thought that the second opening of Baki Monogatari was a simple joke had taken Monogatari's themes far too lightly. In fact, I don't think that the second opening was a delusion at all. I think it really happened. This was the fate of Hachikuji from the very beginning, to, to carry the weight of her past sins until she was met with her eventual purgatory. The purgatory that would never truly await her because she's already dead. It's left me to wonder, was Hachikuji the one who forgot to take her pills? Or was it us all along? She may be struggling with the fact that she's fucking dead, but what's even more sorrowful is not only is she now dead, but she's also a schizo. I didn't even know that was possible. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <sighs> I'm, I'm so tired, guys. Um, thank, thank you, Red Raccoon and the Epic Droid for um, the the pay ten dollar patron. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh god, I'm gonna, I need to cough. I'm gonna go. Bye.